feeling the urge today to share something that's quite deep, mainly because it's something that I have not deep vulnerable. It's maybe something that I don't talk about a lot because of um, just how I see society is, right? And it's something that in the past, I guess I had a lot of shame around and I have had to do a lot of work in myself for my mental health and at, as part of my spiritual journey, which I'll kind of talk about in the video. What I want to talk about, it's like the reality of spiritual expansion and money and society like what that means when you are in what's considered like a lower class <laughs> of of a financial class I mean so in the UK if you're not in the UK you might not understand but in the UK they kind of talk about this class system and you've got people that are considered working class, which is like people who have to work to live. And then you've got like middle class and like those people kind of work, but they get paid really well and have nice houses and the upper class. And to be honest, there's a whole like underclass of people who can't work. Don't know, like, you know, they, they get smeared a lot in the media, you know, like um, people who are literally sick, you know, disabled people, um, God forbid, mothers who want to stay at home and look after their children rather than go to work. People have benefits in that. So we did have an excellent, well, I don't know if it's ever been excellent, but it seemed like there was a sweet spot at one point where we had a benefit system that used to support like a certain kind of unemployed people, sick people, uh, mothers, single mothers, um, you know, just people who weren't low income people. We used to have, we did have a benefit system. And... I guess I'm one of those people. So, and there's a lot, like I say, there's been a lot of propaganda. There's a lot of shame about being one of those people in the UK. So like my family generally are working class family, right? So you might, if you know accents, up north, I'm, I'm from up north. I'm from um, originally from County Durham. If you're interested in UK history, there's a lot of excellent history in County Durham. We have a lot of heritage. There was a lot of stuff went on up here, like in the Thatcher era in the 80s, which is when I was born. Um, minor strikes, which was trying to shut down the steelworks, which is the town that I was born in. And basically it caused like massive rifts in, in the... We've been recovering ever since. We've never recovered really ever since. There was maybe a peak of recovery and it's definitely dwindling again now because of the Conservatives being back in again. I don't want this to be a political thing because actually I'm total anarchist. I think they're all parties are as bad as each other. They're all serving the same agenda, which is oppression of certain people. That's kind of what I want to talk about. So I am from a working class family, except I am a creative, <laughs> undiagnosed neurodivergent when I was a child. Um, well, even as an adult, I haven't had an official diagnosis that's in the pipeline potentially and I don't even know if I want it again it's all very alive and relevant which is why I want to do the video and I was just chatting with somebody today who I've supported my mentorship and and she's kind of um dealing with stuff in her life which is it's all it's all just bubbling I want to get it out which is the reality of this right so you've got a lot of these people like online and stuff we get shown quite a lot of American people in the UK now I know somewhat I've been to America uh I know a little bit about the culture of America I've never lived there what it seems to me as a Brit watching the American culture is very similar like in some ways you kind of have this middle class but there's like a lot of influences and stuff and there's a lot of people online now who, from America who are very middle class we'll call them right so they're making money good money that is not the reality of like the majority of people <laughs> and yet they're, they're like perpetuating all this like spiritual teaching and stuff um, and actually they've got very comfortable lives, right? They've got incomes, they've got generational wealth, they've got, um, or even if they haven't, they've got access to credit. <laughs> um, so they can sustain quite like a comfortable lifestyle while going through and talking about some of this spiritual stuff. And you know what? I don't care what you think. I know money doesn't solve problems, but life is easier when you've got money. <laughs> like when you've got a safety net of money income when you've got access to credit when you've got parents you can borrow money from when you've got a house when you've got a, a, a you know a job you can be more 
free with your spirituality. You can pay for therapy. You can go to retreats. You can, you know, you can afford to do all this stuff that actually the vast majority of us can't. They're just people who are not in the trenches, right? They're just people who have these, have created comfortable lives or can afford to live in a comfortable, isolated way and explore their spirituality or whatever. And I'm just like, I'm not saying I haven't had any support because at times I have. And that's, I, I honestly don't know how I've still survived really when I look at the amount of income I've had and some of the things I have been able to do. So over a period of time, like I have been able to do retreats and things, but actually the retreats that I've done, I've been like the person who pays, pays the bare minimum and can't really afford to donate anything else. And, and I've been gifted those experiences and, and people have been very generous letting me like, when I, I had a period of homelessness, letting me like sofa surf and and I, and I stayed at a permaculture farm for a while and um in a caravan, granted. And I've fixed internet, right? <laughs> Just have to use a SIM card and then move it around to get some internet. This is what I'm saying. Like it's just easier in life to do certain things when you've got an environment where you can afford to do it. Or like if you're living off grid and that sort of thing and you've got like a community of people around you or like that sort of intention, like there's certain levels of privilege and things that make spirituality easier. And I'm not saying spiritual, a spiritual path is supposed to be easy. It certainly hasn't been for me. But like if it wasn't for some of the amazing generosity of people and my determination to carry on with the fundamentals of what I've learned of healing for myself at home which is why I've created love school um I'm gonna share this on my one of my channels but I'll, I'll link my love school channel um because I had to go through the trenches and find ways to heal and just kind of grasp bits of information as I could or insights that I got from those environments and then use them myself at home like literally because I didn't have access to regular therapy or different things and when I have had income or when I have had money come in yes I have used it for certain different types of coaching or therapy and things um but what I had to do was make sure that my cost of like my where I live and stuff is very very low so I like live in a very uh content prudent prudent way <laughs> I don't spend a lot of money but actually what's happened recently I feel like this video might go on and on sorry What's happened recently is I have I don't have an income. I made some choices that were aligned with my spiritual evolution that in order to keep my wellness, to keep my health right, to support other people in need in like crisis times. Um and to be honest, right? So I so I made certain choices and now I'm I'm I have to deal with the consequences of them. And those choices meant that I lost avenues of income I wasn't working um I tried to get social support and because I was honest that I didn't meet quite meet this criteria or this criteria and I have this limitations and things ultimately I didn't get it I didn't get the social support we're supposed to get in the UK when I was encouraged to apply for more they call them benefits here more social support because I am entitled um, I do this because they say you're entitled but they deny you it even though you meet the criteria and, and they make you like jump through these hoops and like prove how prove how much of a victim you are prove how desperate you are prove how broken you are prove how damaged you are in order to get a, a few quid a month <laughs> and I can't do that so this is what I'm trying to say something like this like going on in the UK about so my spiritual part my spiritual journey my mental health recovery has been like aligning with my integrity, choosing myself, not believing in this idea of like a victim mentality in order to find my was I had to come to terms with when I was victimized and things, but just choosing to be a survivor and choosing to align with what I know is best for me, for my highest good, to tap into my creativity, to be honest. So when I was dealing with like these benefit systems and that, because I was honest um I was denied support so I'll just give you an example I was caring for my mom um it's actually a couple of years ago now um for a year and the criteria to get it's a tiny amount of money 
But the criteria to get a tiny amount of money for caring for a family member is that you must do it for 35 hours a week. Now, I can't do anything much for 35 hours a week. Um, when I take into what it ta- take into account what it takes to maintain myself, my lifestyle, a home, um, I have pets, you know what I mean? Um, manage my health and well-being. I can probably be active for between, I don't know, maybe 25 and 35 hours a week. But I certainly couldn't do, like, especially at the time, because I was going through a lot of stress myself. My mother had been seriously ill. We'd had other bereavements in the family and things. I, I couldn't care for her for 35 hours a week. It didn't need it because there was other people supporting her as well. So anyway, it was like I was doing like 20 to 25 hours a week of caring. So because I said that, I just didn't get any of the support that you supposed to be entitled to get for caring for a family member. So in other words, I was an unpaid carer um, that I chose to do. I did make that choice. And I made that choice because it was the best thing to do. It was best for my family. It was best for my integrity. It was best for my spirituality. Like, what's the point of doing all this spiritual work if you can't love the people that are close to you when they need it? So it was a big sacrifice for me. And, I, and I'm still paying for the ripple effect of that, um, trying to get back on my feet. Um. I've been completely kicked off the social support system now. Like, I, well, they were paying my rent. So so they sanctioned me, which is basically when they, you still have to be, like, applying, but they're taking money away because you don't meet their criteria because I wasn't complying with what they said I had to do, which is either search for work for 35 hours a week, not going to do that, um, do some sort of employment 35 hours a week, I'm not going to do that, care for a person 35 I was doing, like, a mix of all of that. Like, I run businesses and stuff or try to run businesses um so I just don't fit in any of their boxes to meet the criteria because I because when I would go to the appointments they would lie I'm actually I've gathered all the evidence of this and one day I am going to write it all up and publish it they would lie I would go to appointments be blatantly honest with them tell them what was going on we'd make an agreement and then on their computer system they would say something completely different and lie and they wouldn't let me record the appointments um and and so so basically it kind of came to a deadlock and I was like, well, like, look, unless you let me support, uh, record these appointments and we can come to an agreement based on my actual reality instead of you trying to make me lie to fit, like instead of you lying and you trying to make me lie to fit this criteria that actually support me because I'm entitled to the support. It became to a deadlock anyway. They sanctioned me, but they were still paying my rent. So there was like a protection in place that I still had to have my housing covered. Um, I don't know if it's just because I was homeless before. I don't know if they just that's just the same for everyone. But for whatever reason, I pay my rent. And then recently, they were like, um, "We are going to do a review, which is basically them getting access to all of my bank accounts and proving my income for the past four months." Now, past four months, I hadn't had a lot of income. I've been scraping by, um, borrowing bits of money, being gifted money by. Um, people to get food and cover my basics and stuff like that like I've been getting by (laughs) trying to build my business up again trying to like get some traction and um anyway it's not been easy I've muddled by but I thought it's just the integrity like something in me just cannot like that is a violation of human rights as far as I'm concerned it's espionage it's they weren't they're, they're not trying to review to see if I have because there's like, you don't get these benefits unless you've got under 16 grand in savings. I haven't got anywhere near that. I might know that. But anyway, they wanted to check that, which basically meant I had to give them all my bank account details for the past four months so they could check and see. And I'm like, this is a, you know, my instincts are quite strong. I'm like, this is a data gathering exercise. This is just them trying to gather data for this whole di- digital currency bullshit to like track our money, where it's been spent, who's for, like, you know what I mean? It didn't feel right. I was like, I can't do that. I was like, I cannot do that. And apart from the fact we have a human right, supposedly, in this country where you're innocent until proven guilty now, they're not supposed to be able to accuse you of a, a an investigate a person unless they suspect them of committing a crime. So are you saying you suspect me of benefit fraud? Um, if you suspect me of benefit fraud, then get the police in then, you know? Like, arrest me, read me my rights, do an investigation. If you have reasonable suspicion that I've committed a benefit fraud crime, get the police in but they don't, you see. They do it all under this guy's manipulation and covert and like, oh, I, it was just so wrong to me and I couldn't do it. So I just couldn't comply because I'm like, that is not the path that I want the society to be going down. That's not the energy I want to be feeding. That's not, 
I couldn't do it anyway. So I had to just say, I, I can't comply with that. I gave them my reasons why I couldn't comply, that I thought it was um not good. <laughs> Everything I've just said, basically, put in writing. So they kicked me off completely. So I have no income now. Sorry, I'm going off on one a little bit here. But this is what I'm trying to say. The reality of a spiritual journey, when you haven't got these safety nets, is you have to deal with really fucking difficult situations, especially at the minute. And I feel like what's going on in society is really kind of important because we're on the brink of these changes, this this contrast of like the old world and the new and this corruption versus um, integrity and and fear versus love. And I feel like we're like in this duality and we're being torn apart, like pick your side, you know? And, and I choose, as hard as it can be sometimes, I choose myself, I choose wellness, I choose love, I choose family, I choose, um, you know, community, I choose integrity, honesty. And I, I can't comply with the other stuff now because I know what the ripple effect of that was. And the ripple effect of that was me ending up seriously ill mentally physically spiritually um and, and and the circumstances in my life being really quite awful so I can't allow myself to go back in that and coupled with the fact that I'm a creative and I feel like this is what's kind of also coming up so you've got like this AI versus like human creativity thing going on and it's like I'm a creative person I can't live without creativity I need my inspiration. I need to respond to that energetic motivation, that inspiration. I want to create. Creativity doesn't pay unless you are, unless you get your break, you know, and unless you kind of settle for kind of some sort of employment where you're told what to create. And that's not happened to me. It's not the path I've chosen. I want to create myself. I want to create the stuff that wants to come through me. I want to create, like I've, I've tried to create garden stuff in the past. I create the stuff at Love School, which is content I'm passionate about, photography, poetry. Like I'm just like a creative person. <laughs> and align with, aligning with that creativity is what keeps me alive. It's what keeps me well. It's what keeps me wanting to live. <laughs> but it doesn't pay the bills at the minute um it's just the reality and so I'm like right on the brink of this edge of like the beautiful things that I have might well be taken and I'm aware of it and what I was chatting to my it's like someone who I used to mentor with when I was chatting with her because she started doing some of this quantum leap stuff, which is online from, again, like I say, some of these spiritual gurus who are probably already in pretty comfortable situations. And I see them all in <laughs> blue dresses and <laughs> two perfect faces <laughs> talking about quantum leaping as if it's like some fantasy. And I did kind of give her a little bit of a warning at the time because I bought into all that stuff in the past as well. And I'll tell you what I learned quantum leaping does leaps you up into a and especially if you set that energetic temp, um intention and you've been building up energetic power to do that it flings you up into a directory where you're changing your frequency if you like i'm not saying the spiritual stuff is not true i'm saying it's real so it flings you up into that and then you come back into your reality and what you get landed in is a heap of shit which is your old life you don't just get springboarded into this new life. It's like, right, well, if you want this new life, you need to clean up the shit of your old life. And that is relationships that are no longer align. That is environments that no longer align. That is business decisions that no longer align. That is, in my case, I can see it was people getting ill, people dying, um, losing my, make, having to make a choice to, to not work. And, and I did kind of warn her. <laughs> But she, she did this stuff and now she's gone through really similar things where it's like losing people, having to deal with really difficult decisions in relationships. And to me, that is the reality of spirit, spiritual work, especially when you haven't got these safety nets. And a lot of the stuff that I'm seeing online is like selling dreams at the minute. It's like selling. I get fed loads of it at the minute on YouTube. It's kind of driving me a bit insane because I quite like YouTube. I like the format of like different videos and stuff but what the algorithm does it sees you like one thing and then it shows you bloody 20 of it and you're just like bombarded with all the same stuff but i tell you what i'm being bombarded with at the minute is a lot of stuff around this dream of sudden money sudden wealth um perfect love you know these dreams 
that obviously people like because of this tearing apart people are wanting this hope they're wanting this inspiration they're wanting something because we're in the trenches of of the thick of our shit we're wanting some hope something to cling on to and it's like being fed to us and our expectations are maybe it's not being met because as far as i see it it's going to take a pretty radical miracle for the millions and millions of us that are really struggling financially to suddenly get a windfall I mean, who's going to do it? All the people hoarding their wealth. Well, they're suddenly just going to gift people money. Are, they, are the people at the top, right, suddenly going to start buying services from the people at the bottom? Oh, Excuse my language in this video. I don't know where it's come from, but I feel like that's the truth. You know what I mean? I feel like that's what we're dealing with. It's like a lot of bullshit. We're being fed this dream when the reality is we're having to wade through a lot of shit. And... The wading through is the spiritual work. It's like, I feel that's what spiritual reality is. And it's not been easy. It's not, my life has gotten better. My wellness has gotten better. My mental health has gotten better. My confidence has gotten better. My ability to communicate has gotten better. All the stuff that I've done on my own spiritual healing journey has improved my life. I haven't seen a significant improvement in my reality. As in... Actually, in many cases, my reality has gotten more and more difficult, which is forcing me to have to clear more and more stuff, more and more shadow stuff, find more and more strength, um, find to tap into more and more creativity, find more inspiration, trust and have faith in God. Like, I feel like that's all coming from really challenging circumstances. And that is the reality of a spiritual journey for many of us, for many millions of us. I know all through my spiritual journey that my external reality um doesn't define my worth or my value and I've had to do a lot of work over the years about that if you're just not a money motivated person and once you've done all the healing that you know you're valuable I know I'm valuable there's not a cell in my body that doesn't think I have an a value as a human and my mind <laughs> my body my soul knows that I am a valuable person in the world just for being myself and for all the creativity that I produce I have good nature I always have best intentions I do the best I can in every situation right there's nothing in me <laughs> at all energetically that says I shouldn't I don't think I should have money that I don't deserve it it's just not motivated by it I just want it, it I, I don't even like I care about it but I don't care about it because money comes I'm just going to spend it I'm just going to give it to whoever wants it so I can just be free to live the life I want and create the things I want that's the only thing I want money for like I don't care about I don't see it as a um anything more than a resource like water <laughs> use water when I need it to wash the drink and then it gets flushed away when it's finished you know what I mean like that's what money is to me um so I don't feel like there's any mindset blocks in any way that would be stopping me having money energetic blocks no but there is no money in my life currently so if you want to give me some money give me some money <laughs> I'm going off on one a bit but like I just wanted to channel a bit for this video I see it's gone on a little bit long now but um if you need it there's just touch of reality if you've watched this I really appreciate it. Please do like and like and subscribe and everything to my channel because trying to build momentum in the current world with all the noise that's going on, it's, it's not easy. And I'm just a single person here just trying to, like I say, follow my creativity, run businesses, try to make some money and survive and help people and follow my spiritual path and all of that. And um, it's, it's not easy at the minute. It's really... Um, Hey, that's me putting a judgment on it, but the lifestyle is easy. The result, getting the results can be challenging sometimes, especially for those of us who have kind of grown up with this karma. I think I was talking about that before, wasn't it? Before Benji interrupted. That have grown up with this karma. And I do think in some ways, like that is the lessons we were here to learn. We were born in the families we were born in. We chose them. Um, or even if we didn't chose them, that's what we got, right? That's what we got. We have to just deal with what we've got. And if what we've got is um, traumatic childhoods, difficult lives, poverty, that's what we've got. And that's what we've got to grow through. And um, that's the reality. 
like, yes, okay, sometimes we might need to feed those dreams and have aspirations and work towards our goals. But it's not, I don't think, you know, whatever religion you follow, I, I, I don't think it's pixie dust and fairies. I think every kind of spiritual text, every story that we tell each other as humans is all based on this um, challenge and journey of growth of dealing with reality of 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 having to overcome and and I think in my own experience that's what a spiritual journey is that's what um growing as a human is and actually we're going through very challenging times just generally at the minute as we are evolving that way and I just wanted to share this because if there's other people out there who are spiritual who are creative who are struggling and you want to honor yourself I just want to say like I'm it can be hard sometimes. It can be a challenge and we're here to face that challenge. And ultimately, I am optimistic. I do think we are going to be able to do that. Um, We will overcome, as in we just keep moving towards making life a bit better to everyone, healing a bit more, accepting each other a little bit more, loving each other a little bit more, fixing what we can, maintaining what we need to and letting go of what needs to go. Thank you for watching. Maybe see you again at some time when I'm inspired. <laughs> Bye.